at Gloucester History Festival. Beams and the Blackfires were donated by Henry III. And I mean, there's so much great stuff that goes on here. If anyone's not been to Gloucester History Festival... I- the Gloucester History Festival special series on history with Jackson. So hello and welcome back to the History of Jackson podcast. Now we are joined by comedian Dom Jolly. How are you doing, Dom? I'm good. Am I looking at you? We're, uh, we're taking a natural flow. All right. and that- hello. Yeah, hello. <laughs> it's all right, I'm doing it as part of the act. Yeah. <laughs> She's very gullible, I will say. <laughs> so you are here doing a talk on conspiracies. I am. What inspired you to look at conspiracy theories? Uh, lockdown, really. I think like a lot of people, we kind of stayed at home and went online and I just started arguing with a lot of <laughs> very strange people. I think during those times of kind of financial and political and medical turmoil, I think people do start getting a bit more conspiracy minded. Uh, and obviously I was spending a lot of time on there and I like arguing and I got into it more and more and, and I, I kind of thought part of my problem was I was arguing with things like flat earthers and stuff and yeah. I was thinking, do you actually believe this or are you just doing it for clicks? Are you doing it just to get, cause controversy? So one of the ideas for the book was I wanted to go and look people in the eye and see if they really meant it, whether they really believed in this stuff. Because to me, conspiracies used to be, historically, to get it on uh, yeah. a history basis, <laughs> historically, uh, conspiracies tended to be quite fun in a way. I mean, not always, but they kind of, they were wacky, they were, did we land on the moon? Bigfoot, is Elvis alive? They were kind of harmless. And then in about 2015, I feel there was a tilt, and I, nothing to do with Donald Trump, of course, it <laughs> was. I honestly think it was the moment Kellyanne Conway, who was Donald Trump's spokeswoman, used the term alternative facts. I think the moment that happened, before, whatever we argued about, we argued around a central truth that we agreed on. After that, conspiracies kind of infected the body politic and everyone suddenly had their own truth and their own facts and I think it's a very frightening time I think they're, they've gone from being fun to being quite dangerous Yeah and you're going from internet memes of making a joke out of the moon landing to now them being really widely held truths how do you think they became so deeply embedded within society? I think the internet is really a big part of it um, I mean I have a joke in my book which is not an original one but in the <laughs> old days Every village had an idiot, but unfortunately they all went on the internet and met up. And that's (laughs) that's kind of how we got the current cabinet, but also a lot of conspiracies. Um, I think algorithms are a massive part of it. As part of this book, I set up a fake Instagram page as a conspiracist. And I followed the usual suspects, Lawrence Fox, David Icke, Wright said Fred, weirdly, who were (laughs) leading lights in the conspiracy movement. And the moment you do that, the algorithm smells you're interested in whatever you've express an interest in and it starts to fire a tsunami of nonsense comes in and so if you looked at my Instagram page and the fake one we are living in alternative universes and that's what's happening we're so polarized and and a lot of it's due with the algorithms and online so when you you've gone and, and met these people yeah. in person you know, how do they try and convince you of their conspiracy theory and how do they do that so that's what's interesting I don't you know firstly I, I'm not someone saying that conspiracies don't exist. Yeah. Definitely. Corpor- <laughs> corporations, governments have behaved badly and stuff, but it's not always a conspiracy. It's often just corruption or behaving badly. But there are conspiracies, and there are occasionally conspiracy theories turn out to be true. Not many. Uh, and I have no problem with people critically thinking, which is a word that's been completely distorted now. And I have no problem with people having conspiracy theories. The problem I have is if you have a conspiracy theory that's your belief, you do whatever you want. But the moment you start to get a bit zealous, a bit missionary about it, and start to possibly influence vulnerable people, especially we saw that with vaccinations and stuff, that's when I've got an issue. So it depended which conspiracy theorist I met. Some of them, I met a flat earther called Jacob in Glastonbury. He was lovely. (laughs) It was just like, it was his hobby. He could have been a train spotter or a a stamp collector. He decided he was a flat earther. And at the (laughs) weekend, he'd go and do experiments with lasers and try and see ships going over the horizon. He didn't care whether you liked it or not. And that was fine. But I've met other ones that are deeply, deeply dangerous, I think. And especially the worst ones are the grifters. The ones that actually don't even believe what they're saying but they've managed to monetize it. So I'm talking about people like yeah. Alex Jones and Infowars and those sort of people. They are deeply, deeply dangerous. And I think you've made an interesting point about Alex Jones <laughs> there. Because <Yeah. laughs> his, his platform is let's say, so dangerous. Yeah. How do we set about going to kind of debunk these theories that people who've got such a massive platform are just yeah. spewing? I mean, it's one of the big problems in the book. 
I end, I, I've just toured the book, sort of talking about it, and I end with, can I swear on this? Uh, yeah, go on. We're all yeah. fucked <laughs> and we're going to die because it's not going to get any better because, you know, we had, we've already had this terrible conspiracy world we live in and with the advent of AI and deep fakes, it's going to get worse and worse and I don't know how you debunk it. One of my favourite conspiracies that I investigated in the book was, was one that Finland didn't exist and, and just quickly in 1917 apparently Russia and Japan conspired to invent a country called Finland because where Finland is is apparently just sea yeah. <laughs> so that they could have exclusive fishing rights uh, and the fish that they took would be transported to Japan on the Trans-Siberian Express under the guise of Nokia products. Oh. Not my theory yeah. <laughs> but that's what it was. So I thought well surely that's really easy. You can debunk that because I'll fly to Finland and I'll land in Finland and I'll say I'm in Finland and that's the end of that conspiracy. <laughs> but I did that chapter on purpose at the beginning to show just how impossible it is to debunk because conspiracy theorists always have a, a get out clause. You're either in on it yourself, you're a paid shill, you're working for Bill Gates. Uh, when I landed in Finland, I was told I wasn't in Finland. I was actually in Sweden or Russia because the Swedes are also in on it. Oh, okay. uh, someone in <laughs> Finland who did my passport, I said, where am I? And uh, he said, Finland. I said, but am I? He said, look at your phone. So I did. I looked at my phone on my, uh, on my, and the map on the phone. And I thought, well, there it is. It says Finland. And then I thought, if I was a conspiracist, I'd say, who built the phone? Who drew the map? And you realize you can never win. They, they will never. I just quoted something today on my Twitter, which I can't remember, which was basically true intellectual, a true intellectual position is stating the moment at which you'll admit you're wrong. I can't remember if I got yeah. that quite right. But there has to be a moment where proof is enough that you think, all right, I was wrong. I have never met a conspiracy theorist yeah. <laughs> that has accepted that. I mean, I, I'm still waiting on my paycheck from Bill Gates. Oh my God, so called. that's yeah, my yeah. joke. I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> if I knew where to invoice Bill Gates, he owes me a fortune, <laughs> I know. And, um, Bill Gates is such a yeah. weird person to pick on as well because Sure, he's a bit odd. He looks like he's been dressed by his dad. Uh, <laughs> I think Microsoft's a bit dodgy and stuff. But, he, I mean, as far as I've seen, and maybe I'm saying this now because I'm paid by him, I'm not. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> like he did try and do a thing about malaria and cure malaria. There are far worse billionaires. I mean, yeah. Elon, Elon Musk. So why are they picking on him? So much? It's so weird. But there you go. Well, I'll have to tell my dad about Finland as well because he works in Finland. No, and I know you're not, you're not there. You're not there at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do you meld the two careers as a historian, because this is history, and a comedian. You see, I don't think it is history for me. I mean, although I'm really fascinated in modern history, certainly from like 1900 onwards, really, from the moment you could see it on telly, yeah. I'm interested <laughs> in colour. Um, it's a real problem, actually, because uh, doing my tour... So when I finished doing comedy, well, finished doing sort of shows, and I really wanted to be a travel writer, I've now built up a following, but I think people come to me either because they've read my books or because they like my comedy shows, and those two are not mutually inclusive. And what I've been trying to do is get to a stage where I can do something that incorporates both. But it is difficult, and I've realised that people don't like you jumping careers. To me, no. I've, I, you know, I never thought I was going to be a comedian. I did that, I had a lot of fun, but now I want to try something else. And people are a bit like, oh, no, you can't do that. You're a squirrel. You can't write about North Korea. And I go, well, I can, actually. Um, so, no, it, yeah. <laughs> it, so it's very odd. It, it is tricky sometimes. And I think often I get people coming to my shows, I think assuming that I will be dressed as a squirrel shank to a big mobile phone, and I'm actually talking to them about my trip around Iran or something, and they get slightly confused, but that's life, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really like that answer yeah. of how they, they exist. Well, it's very but, yeah. difficult. I mean, it is a really difficult thing to do. And if I can get those two to, to, to come together, I suppose the way I would do it in the end, I need to kill various national treasures. I need, to kill, <laughs> I need to kill Michael Palin. I saw him once on the street, and I know Michael Palin, and I love him, but there was just a tiny part of me as I was driving, <laughs> thing. I could just sneeze and go into him, and he's gone. Because if I could do travel, if I could do my books as TV shows, then it combines both my supposed fortes. But I never wanted to make these as TV shows to start with, because I wanted to kind of prove my chops as a writer. Yeah. And I hope I've done that. This is my ninth book. It's my fifth proper travel book. Because these are travel books, essentially, where I find a subject that I go and travel around. So that's, that's why. A, uh, yeah. That's a lovely goal to try and make it's, TV shows. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Anyone <laughs> Michael watching? Palin, watch Hello. out. Yeah. yeah, watch it, Michael. I'm coming for you. <laughs> now, we're at Gloucester History Festival. It's yeah, an absolutely are. fantastic festival. Now, what has been... You've only been here for a few minutes. I've seen you in the, the yeah. green room here. But so far, yeah. what has been your favourite thing that you've heard, seen about Gloucester History Festival? The best I know thing you're is from that I, have, I haven't been <laughs> savagely beaten yet because I'm, <laughs> I'm from Cheltenham. So really, I shouldn't be allowed in, in Gloucester 
And people in Cheltenham fear Gloucester a little bit. Uh, but actually, it is amazing. I mean, look at this building. It's absolutely astonishing. It's about 800 years old, is that right? Oh, yeah, I think and, so. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to have a history festival, let's have it in a very, very old, very cold uh, stone building. So yes. that's great. But it no, is. it's lovely. Yeah. It's very nice. And there's good sandwiches. There's free wine. Um, what more do you need to know? It's yeah. great. Well, actually, one thing we do need to know yeah. is where can people grab a copy of your book? So they can go, yeah. <laughs> Amazon, <laughs> online. Uh, you can get them from anywhere, really. I mean, they're available at all good and bad bookshops. Uh, you can go to my website. Actually, I don't even think my website sells it, but you can have a look at my website, domjolly.tv. Um, <laughs> or you could come to one of my tours. That's what you really should do. So I've just done a big tour of the called the Conspiracy Tour, where I talk about all the things, conspiracy, that I've found, but with some extra stuff as well. Uh, and I do sell books and sign them afterwards. And that's gone so well that I'm doing another three-month tour in September, October, November. So look out for dates for that, and that'll be oh, fun. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very much for coming thank on the Thank you very podcast. much. And my son's called Jackson as well, so that was really good. There we go. Yeah. <laughs>